and I am the nonfiction buyer for Anything's collection. Hi, and I'm Matthew. I buy the adult fiction for our collection. And we're here today to talk about Comfort Reads, the books that you find yourself drawn towards in times of crisis. Um, yeah, Matthew, what have you been reading during this time? Uh, so I'm the kind of person who uh, gets through a stressful time by, I guess, reading about stressful situations that uh, people make it through uh, just fine. So uh, I've been doing a lot more on the uh, horror and thriller side of things. Um, one recent favorite is uh, T. Kingfisher's The Twisted Ones, um, all about uh, a woman with just a fantastic voice. She is so much fun to spend time with. Um, being stuck in an isolated house out in the boonies of North Carolina. Um, there's definitely something creepy in the woods, uh, and she'd love to leave, but then her dog can't really leave your dog behind when you escape the monsters. So uh, because of that, she's got to figure out how they tie into her family, uh, how to deal with them, and that dog um, and save the day. Um, it is just a pure pleasure to read, but it's also the kind of book that uh, every time, uh, you know, the branch taps on my window at night, I have to, I have to, you know, peek through the curtains. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, another horror novel that I really enjoyed is uh, Grady Hendrix's new book, The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. Uh, he just has this gift for taking kind of a goofy concept um, and adding a bunch of humor into it, but also making the book terrifying, making you uh, just feel for the characters. You get, uh, you get all the feels, you get the cries, you get the laughter, you get the shivers. Um, in this particular one, uh, a group of um, 90s housewives that live together on a cul-de-sac uh, start themselves a true crime uh, book club in secret. And uh, because of the book club, uh, they sort of learn the signs of a serial killer. So when a vampire does show up in town, um, they may not know what he is, but they recognize that something's not right. And he's not just this you know, gorgeous, charming, mm -hmm. drifting stranger that uh, has uh, the goodwill of everyone at heart. And uh, as it becomes more involved with their kids, they realize they have to put their book club skills to use to uh, save the family. And uh, I guess the third one I'd like to talk about is uh, Pretty as a Picture by Elizabeth Little. Um, this one is not horror, it's just a thriller, but uh, it's very Hitchcockian. Um, you know, references Rebecca all the time in the, uh, in the text. So if you've enjoyed uh, that film or any of other of Hitchcock's things, I think you'll love this one. Um, a film editor ends up uh, taken to a secret uh, filming location out on an isolated island uh, where they are exploring a, a true crime from the past. Um, but as they create this film, things start happening on set to people there. After someone else is killed, our film editor needs to figure out if she can put all of her skill at splicing together messy footage into, co into a coherent story can also be used to splice together all the clues and figure out what really happened and how to keep everyone safe. Um, other than that, I've just been listening to a lot of the fantastic uh, nonfiction that you buy um, on Overdrive. So Midnight at Chernobyl, uh, The Coming Plague, still kind of dark, but still things that, that humanity made it through. Mm. Those all sound so good, but completely <laughs> different from what I'm reading. Um, when I find myself a little overwhelmed by the world, I gravitate towards lighter books, um, books that are gonna make me laugh and just kind of like get me out of a dark place. Um, so what I've been reading is the complete opposite of, <laughs> of what you've been reading. Um, the first book is Tweet Cute by Emma Lord. It's um, about two high schoolers in New York City who are the Twitter reps for their family's respective burger companies. Um, so there's Pepper, whose family owns the corporate Big League Burger, and then there's Jack from the small family-owned Girl Cheesing. And when Big League Burger is accused of stealing Girl Cheesing's grilled cheese recipe, this drama ensues, um, there's this Twitter war, and then 
romance also happens. Um, <laughs> it's impossibly cute. It's super readable. If you like young adult romance or romance in general, I would totally recommend it. It's one of the better ones I've read. Um, and then the next book that I read was called Wow, No Thank You by Samantha Irby. Um, this one's nonfiction, but it reads like fiction. It's super fun. Um, it's Samantha Irby's third book and my personal favorite of hers. It's a book of humor essays about aging, skincare, moving to the suburbs and settling down with stepchildren um, and more. She's got a great voice. Uh, she presents it with this um, or with this confidence, but her humor is kind of self-deprecating, but you kind of just like want to hang out with her and you want her to be her, you want to be like her best friend. Um, I listened to the audiobook read by her, which I highly recommend. It feels like you're truly just like hanging out with somebody. So if you like, um, if you like podcasts, I would recommend it. I feel like it's got that kind of, you know, kind of breezy vibe. Um, I mean, she does talk about some harder issues, but, um, or more difficult issues, but um, on the whole, it's like a really fun read. So I highly recommend that one as well. And then the third book that I've read is called The Roxy Letters by Mary Pauline Lowry. Um, and this is for fans of Bridget Jones's Diary. Um, if you love that book or the movie, I think you'll really like this book. It reminds me, it's kind of like an updated version of it. It's set in Austin, Texas in the mid 2000s. Um, Instead of a diary, it's written in letters to her ex-boyfriend and current roommate, um, yikes, uh, which start as a reminder for him to pay his rent. But then the letters become more in depth about her life, um, her day job at um, Whole Foods and her weird boss, um, romantic troubles with this 30-something um, skateboarder. but mostly about how she as an artist feels stuck and feels kind of like blocked artistically. Um, she hasn't created anything in a while. And then when a Lululemon opens up downtown, she becomes enraged um, and she despises how Austin is becoming this like corporate city and she wants to you know, keep Austin weird. And so she decides to stage a protest. Um, and it's all about like, will it work? Um, you know, will she, you know, get out of her funk? Will she be able to, you know, find love? Um, it's so, it, it was another really fun read. It had me laughing out loud. So if again, if you like Bridget Jones's Diary or other like first person um, books that give you an insight into somebody's life, I would highly recommend that one as well. And all of the books that we've talked about today are available on Overdrive. So if you are interested in any of them, definitely give them a listen or a read. Um, yeah. Uh, and if you have any suggestions, um, for, or, or you want to share what you're reading right now, leave a message below, um, or in the comment section. Um, but yeah, thanks for talking, Matthew. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah.